I think we're live. <clears throat> I believe we are live. I think that was on. That has to be off. Here we go. <clears throat> Jack. I found this. Uh, it's it's they. It's not really a fuzz. It's a. Um, it's a what you call it. Uh, it's a big muff. So they technically it falls under a distortion. What's up, Joe? Ben, Skyprop, Yeti Masi. Everything sound okay? Look okay? Michael, Joe, Blackjack, Vips, Martian, Murray, Tony. What's up, buddy? We got Jazz, Ferd, Zoot, J Shaf, Zach. Andrew, Thomas, I think I saw, uh, who went by there, uh, Thomas Ferd and Gary Davlin, what's up Gary, we got Martian, we got Rico, we got Vimps, we got Joe, we got Matt, Rob M, Speaker, what's up buddy? We got uh, Hit Metal Works. It says it's uh, okay. My voice sounds okay. See, it's hard to tell because my voice sounds, it feels a little echoey in my head. <laughs> Looks and sounds great. Who did I miss? Blackjack, David, Yeti Matsi, Sassy Cat. Two, two big regulars, as, as is Strat CPO. We got Jims. We got Scott Bob, Frank C. BC Rich. We got David. Terry 3G says it sounds good, and I believe him. He, he's yet to lie to me. Electro Omega. Yeah, I pulled out the Charvel Black Burst. No echo on your end yet. See, it sounds slightly echoey in my head. Well, the voice might sound a little compressed because I'm running a compressor. <laughs> Uh, the guitar is not running a compressor. There is actually a compressor in the chain, but I have it turned off. Um, I didn't like it with the compressor on. Then it was too, n not enough dynamic, um, you know, response to it. I'd rather. The echo is in my head. Well, there's a lot of space up there for things to bounce around. Before I forget, now that people are just talking about, you know, the sound and everything, I think THU is still on sale. Is it? I think it's still on sale, right? 50% off? So, you know, if you were thinking about it, then I'd say, wait, don't buy it yet. Wait till it's on sale. It's on sale. <laughs> the, the time is now. If you were holding off on getting it, do it well. It's, well, it's like almost, I think it's 50% off right now. <laughs> So I have this going through my my new toy. Welcome to the podcast from hell. Caller, you're on the air. Uh, thanks uh, for taking my call, Steve. I don't know what I'm going to do about the Red Sox. God, they suck so bad. <laughs> I, the, the fun I have had this week.
wait, who, <clears throat> who, who, um, who do we have on the phone? A Stephen A. from New York. Listen to me very clearly so even those in Boston can understand. Damian Lillard is not going to Boston, okay? He's not. Uh, thanks for thanks for that caller. Oh the oh oh the fun. <laughs> Listen to that thing. This is three items. Uh, actually, five items, if I'm being honest. Three main items. A distortion box into a clean amp. Into a cab. with the uh, big muff off. That, uh, that's with it on. <laughs> you may have noticed a slight change in tone. Going for a cigarette, are you? Come on, dude. <laughs> no, actually, I'm not running the guitar through um, this as an interface. Um, I'm just using this for the voice, uh, which has been spot on. And I'm running this into my focus, right? Because I need everything to blend together to go um, out to the line out, to go to my line in, to go through this. It's a very, it's a very complicated system, a ridiculously over-engineered solution, but it's the one I'm stuck with. I'm sure if I could figure out how to do a... Um, the loop back, I could figure this out without having to do that whole line out crap, but I haven't, haven't figured it out. C100. <laughs> Country, country. Exactly today's hottest jams. Yeah, this thing is like, it's been a ton of fun, like all week. Like, <laughs> trying to find samples, you know. Um, like I said, I found, um, uh, that's literally straight from Hanna Barbera Studios. Not that one. That's continuous. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you, you could come up with a story. Then I was like, we got to get out of here. <laughs> uh, but I uh, tripped over my own two feet. <laughs> Like Mr. Microphone. WNPC. <laughs> you know. You know, I uh I think I quit. 
yeah, yeah. No, I, th- I, I, I think I quit. So, uh, so long. Exactly, uh, exactly. Uh, you know what? I, I so long, cow folks. I, uh, I, I, I think I'm quitting. <laughs> Sounds are louder. How's this? Is that better? Is that more mix? Because I can set the mix for the back. Flame cam here. There it is. Here's our flame cam. Sure. Oh. No do. So yeah, I've been messing around with this thing. Um, boy, it's got a ton of I/O. You know, Bluetooth, and you can plug into the back, and you can do a like a whole USB thing with it um, as well individually mix that and you can do a bunch of recording straight and that's the one thing i haven't messed with yet is the you know i don't know how much you, i don't think it does it i think they sum the tracks on the field recording so i don't know if, if that's really a value to people i, I think it, it's better as an interface you know if you don't have any now you got a four channel That, that that's even getting on me now. Time to time to move to to a regular to now your regularly scheduled tone. Already in progress. <laughs> Try this for a little bit. Just for a little bit. <laughs> I knew you had truckery, but I didn't know you had truckery. That's right, we got truckery. All the truckery you can think of. That's a that's a respectable neighborhood. <laughs> So let's let's in C. You know, I should be doing voiceover work. See, this is the voice you miss every week. And I'm not even using the Lewitt mic because um, those condenser mics, they don't uh, reject enough uh, surrounding noise. And my air conditioner is running on the max. It is like, goddamn, it's like an armpit outside. I hate this time of year. I hate this time of year. I hate this time of year. Put me down on record for hating this time of year. Where is my goddamn crispy air? You know, the funny thing is, is you know, I, I look over at Henning's house, and it's like I, I check it because it, I have it on my, you know, I had the uh, my weather app. I added because I was over there for a while, so I had it added itself to my weather app. And I look over, and it's like 58 degrees with a dew point of 45, and I'm like, oh, f you, <laughs> God, no. It's like a dew point of 71 out there right now. It's like the mold has mold. It's like literally like tropical air. Tropical air out of the goddamn Caribbean or the Caribbean, depending on, you know, your upbringing. We use some of these sounds and you finish the day. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Sometimes a man just got to work on the trailer. Until he's blown more money on that trail than if he just bought one new. But that's not the point. The point is, the trailer is done.
do 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 I don't think I have any kitties down here right now. I might. Ninety-four with eighty-eight percent humidity in the south. Well, you can stay there. I don't like that. <laughs> I don't want. I don't want ninety-four with eighty-eight percent humidity. <laughs> put me down as a. Put me down as a no on that. <laughs> you can, you can keep it down there. Damn it! I don't like it. Oh, I wonder. Uh, hmm. I wonder if I go here and then reduce this to that. Check, 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 check. One, two, check. Did my voice go down on the app. Check, check. My voice did not go down on the app. Check. Oh, I think that did it. Check, check, check. One, two. Check, check. Everything still sound okay to you? Oh, no, no. So there it is. It's back again. Yeah. Um, I don't know what does that. But you're not hearing double high. Everyone's saying it sounds good. Okay. You can't pass away on Wednesday. She was 13. Oh, that sucks, dude. I hate to hear that. I hate to hear that. No, Rob's saying he doesn't hear it. He doesn't hear the double talk. Okay, good, good. Well, you know, if you're not hearing it, then I'm fine. It's just that I hear it. It's ever so slightly. It's just a couple of milliseconds, but it's there and it's pissing me off. <laughs> it's an old fashioned piss off. When you're hearing double in your microphone, then it's pissing you off. Come on down to the truckery. It, it, it writes itself. What is this? Is it? Was it? Is it? So it's G, but I think it's A and uh, or it's G, and I'm in. I think I'm in uh, D sharp. That does not sound like E. We got trucks. Get some trailer work in terms of movies. Yeah. <laughs> right. In a world where a trailer... Wait, wait, I need a good, uh, what's a good, that's not, um, that's not a good one. Do I have anything for like a, I don't think I do. This is such like a, oh, what the, <laughs> it's just a, it's just a tone. So, you know, it's supposed to block out all the shit words. <laughs> Suppose you you have to stop it when you when you say them. So what I got here, I got uh, continuous country. Do 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 do. Sounds like there's a noise gate. I think there is a noise gate going on in here. Sometimes you hear noise and then it cuts off. Check. Oh, 
I'm not really hearing it. But then again, I don't have great ears for that high frequency stuff. In a world ruled by electric cars, one man refurbished the trailer, spending as much as a goddamn Tesla on it. Uh, you could have bought a Cybertruck for what you got into that thing. Ugh. Do, do, do. Is it hot where you are? It's hot where most people are. Not as hot as it is down here, but, you know, I kind of have a lock on the whole heat thing. In a world. <laughs> Oh, well, we're having fun, because we can. Right. Yeah, thanks uh, for taking my call. <laughs> I love that for the megaphone. So one of them is um, by far the best one, because it's closest like somebody's calling in. That's megaphone number one, and you just got to peg everything. Peg the gain, the tone, everything just has to be pegged to the max. and It, it works perfectly, like somebody calling in. When car shopping, yeah, no cars. Cars are expensive. Did cool off a couple days past week. Heat index was only only ninety five instead of one ten. Look at you. So it's crispy. <laughs> yeah, see the thing is is you can't program in you can only it only programs on and off. So when I hit this, it goes to whatever is pre programmed. But I could go into effect and I think go to Effectron. And then I think it's pitch. And if I I'm, enable it, and then I go down here, so that's zero. And then we can go in the opposite direction. Glenn Fricker! <laughs> this, is, this is the Glenn Fricker trick. The only problem with what you're doing is you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Guys made a... <laughs> the guy has made a channel on it. <laughs> Got gotta hand it to him. <laughs> but yeah, you can go. You, you can go either way with this. <laughs> it's so fucking hot out there. See that takes a little of the sting away from the swear word. Oh, God. All right. Check. Check. Yeah, I think people, people like it on the, on the lower side. Look, it's a little too low. <sighs> Got to bring it up to about, uh, I think around, around right there is a good, good, good spot to land on. Check, check. <laughs> Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Oh, uh, yeah, this is uh, Satan. 
Okay, Boomer. Who's getting old? <laughs> Not impressed at all. I was hearing the same thing. About your comments. You know, you're, you're a bit of a stick in the mud, Andrew. One in every crowd. Okay, okay, Andrew. Oh, 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 go on, your majesty. <laughs> oh, go on, your majesty. <laughs> anyway. Don't you have a book to read? I thought this was a channel about guitars. Well, there were you were dead wrong, man. This channel is about whatever I feel like it is that night, and that's what it is this night. And it's and it's it's worked out for me for the most part. But no, it's not really about guitars. I just happen to play guitar. And that's the difference. And guitar, and speaker knows this, is it just a tiny sliver of my life. I did not go to school for guitar. And I had a whole different life outside of that. Yes, yeah, exactly. Sorry, Andrew. No refunds. So all this, all this playing was just fit in between, you know, real life, uh, not guitar crap. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, exactly. It is, it is time. Shame, Andrew. Shame. What are you, what are you, my goddamn segment producer? Shame. What are you? You gotta admit, you know, I'm not a terrible guitar player. In fact, some would say I'm a better guitar player than a lot of so called guitar sites. <laughs> but you know, who's keeping who's keeping score? Not me. Uh, Steve, it's my birthday here in Scotland. Oh, look at you. Give you a laugh. Okay, we'll give you, you know, we'll, we'll do better than a, we'll do better than a laugh. You know, I had put together, did, is it on this friggin', you know, there's a slight chance it's on this computer. Is it on this computer? Uh, no, that doesn't look like it. Would it be, would it be under here? Let me see. <clears throat> At one point I, I, I took the, you're doing some stuff. Um, yeah, but that doesn't, that none of that looks right. What do you see here? It would be a wave output file. That's Stoller, that's Flamma, that's Vola, acoustic, silent guitar, Mahler. Got the jam wave, got the FX10. I got a new flamma thing coming in. 
But I could have said uh, birthday. What is that? That's a, no. That's. that's a, I'm looking for the birthday song. Huh? I guess it's not there. Really? Really? I know I ran across it recently. That's pissing me off. Under documents, um, under Reaper Media. No, that doesn't look right either. No, it would be under music. Anyway, you know what? We we can we can put it together real quick. But I had a nice stereo one. Where the hell is it? Damn it! Oh, you know what? It might not be in E flat. It actually might be in E. So probably better just to do it from scratch. All right, hold on, hold on. Here we go. Where is it? Uh, Thu. There's your Lupa. Uh, let me see. <clears throat> That should be good enough. There you go, dude. You know what, Andrew does remind me. Uh, did anybody catch the Gilligan's Island Marathon last weekend on Sundance? I mean, let's get into the let's get into the heart of this friggin' podcast here. Whatever the hell this is, this live show about stuff. It was, uh, you know, I had forgotten about a lot of the episodes. Um, it was, uh, it was just so friggin' nostalgic. I, you know, uh, you know, season one kind of sucked. They're still, uh, filming in black and white. TV has been slowly going from color between like 1956 and like 1966. But it, it, not everybody is shooting in color. It's really not, I think, I think until the, the fall of 1966 that the primetime lineup has gone to... Um, a color, like, you know, across the board, everybody has said, okay, just like what happened with high def, but the same thing happened with color. In fact, I think it was 1985 or 1986 before the last black and white station went under. And it well, had to switch, didn't go under. They switched from black and white to color because the a component on the transmitter broke and you couldn't get the part for it anymore. And I had to switch the color. I mean, they were <laughs> that that's how much money <laughs> television and radio stations put into broadcasting. <laughs> it's like they they put that in there like I'm on a sixty year return. Uh but uh yeah, it was uh it was really interesting because it, it was in high def 
It was really crispy, and you can really start to see, like, some of the, um, you know, some of the props. You can see the wires. You know, something you couldn't see as a kid on a, you know, on a little TV, you know, a little Sony Trinitron. Uh, you know, back then, if you had a 13-inch TV, you had a big TV. So it was uh, really like a 20, you know, but it was like most people had 13, 14-inch TVs. <clears throat> uh, and uh, it was just interesting because you, you you remember I, 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 there's this great episode where um, Gil, you, the dream sequences were always great and you forget how much they sexed up not so much Ginger because I think they felt it would be like too obvious they really sexed up Marianne oh my god so it's like there's this an episode that's like pretty much a spoof on Jack and the Beanstalk. Um, and he goes up and goes in, but it, it, it's this whole thing where he's trying to find oranges. He goes in there and Skipper plays the giant and Marianne plays like the woman who like greets him at the door. And she's in like a French maid outfit, you know, with fishnet stockings with the line up the back and in heels. And I'm like, Oh, this is, there's an interesting costume decision. <laughs> you know, I mean, what? And uh, and then they, they switch it to, you know, they clearly, for a perspective thing, they make the crates smaller. And, uh, you know, they have uh, Alan Hale running around, and the, they put a little kid in Gilligan's outfit to run around. It's clearly a little kid. And it's uh, actually uh, Bob Denver's son they got running around. Uh, there's another episode when I think... Uh, Thurston Howell thinks he's he might be ill or he's sick or something, and he recovers, but he, he thinks that you know maybe he should he should write a will. The opening sequence to that has Marianne like I think picking flowers for him. You never it was like the shortest friggin' outfit you ever saw in your life. It's like ninety percent leg. I'm like, hey, of course you don't remember that as a kid because you're a kid, you know you don't notice it. But as an adult, I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Damn, that's, uh, you know, she's got like booty cheek hanging out. I'm like, what is <laughs> the producers? It's like, it was it was pretty crazy. It was really crazy how much they uh, they did. Oh, yeah, yeah, Marianne versus Ginger. I, I, I think you're going to see, to be honest, <clears throat> I think... Um, I think you're going to see, uh, oh, oh, I have caps lock on? I do. I think you're going to see um, Marianne winning a landslide. That tends to be, uh, that tends to be a, you know, a, a, a fan favorite. Marianne way, way more over Ginger for whatever reason. Um. And then, of course, Tina Louise famously, uh, well, first of all, she had a lot of reason to be very angry with the show. I don't know if any of you guys know this, but the way they ended was pretty crappy. They they were notified that they had been renewed halfway through the third season. Sherwood Schwartz, the producer of the show, goes back to the cast members and says, we've been renewed, and they're all happy. Tina Louise and Don Wells go out and buy, like, brand new houses, uh, you know, uh, Russell Johnson goes out and buys uh, like a new car, right? Because they've been renewed. The head of the studio comes back from vacation, finds out that Gunsmoke has been canceled because Gunsmoke hadn't been doing that great. And um, he basically said, why'd you cancel Gunsmoke? And they're like, because we have these new shows and we need a spot to fill them. And he says, I'll find you a spot right now. And he canceled Gilligan's Island and whatever the show was right after it. And uh, uh, he had the, it was so late, TV Guide had already ran with a story that there was going to be a one-hour opening for season four, okay? TV Guide is like the goddamn industry Bible at the time. That That's how late this decision goes on. And the studio stops calling Sherwood Schwartz back. 
And he has to go back to the cast members and basically say, I think we've been canceled. And they were. And and again, it's sort of bitter, sweet, you know, but basically uh, it it really kind of did suck because Gunsmoke gets moved, I think, from Monday night to Thursday night, now occupies the Gilligan's Island slot for one hour and goes bonkers, becomes one of the top five shows on television. They're calling it a stroke of programming genius. <laughs> and of course, that's what he takes credit for that, right? I'm a, I'm a friggin' genius. And, um, you know, it's hard to argue because their numbers went up, way up. And Gunsmoke became, quote, unquote, Gunsmoke because of that, you know? Can't pick Mrs. Howell. Oh, let me give you a little, we'll end this poll. Yeah, I knew, I knew it would be Marianne on the landslide. You know, Marianne is pretty much, yeah. Um, so Natalie Schaefer plays Mrs. Howell, right? Lovey Howell on there. Um, when they're hired, she's put, she goes down as that she is, um, uh, what's his name there? Uh, Thurston, uh, you know, Jim Backus. Um, he's 51 and she's 52, right? So he really is 51 years old. Um, she's not 52. And in fact, nobody really knows what her age is until after she dies, not even her husband, until it finally came out. When she died, she died in 1990 at the age of 78, but being born in 1912. But actually, she was born in 1900 and had died at the age of 90 in 1990. And she was actually 64 years old when Gilligan's Island first started taping. She was 11, no, 13 years the senior of Thurston. 13 years. No one knew. She kept it. Judy, Judy uh, Tenuta did the same thing. She was 10 years older than she listed. And I, people didn't really find out till after she died. Um, she was really a Broadway person, that Natalie Schaefer. She wasn't really a television person. Uh, Tina Louise was the only one that really, <clears throat> I mean, Bob Denver, Bob Denver did a few things. Alan Hale came from a, came from a Hollywood family. He was sort of like, his dad was huge in the industry. I don't forget if he was an actor or a director, but Alan Hale was like all set, you know. Jim Backus was sort of self-made, did a ton of voiceover work, you know, the voice of Mr. Magoo. Um, that Natalie Schaefer was more of like a Broadway you know, and Tina Louise had done some Broadway stuff, but Tina Louise was so bitter at that show. First, because they got canceled in such an unceremonious way, just this horrible, you know, and then they were stuck with these new houses that they probably couldn't afford. And um, she hated, she, it, it, she's recently, after the, the death of, she's the only one left. Tina Louise is the only one still alive. And after Don Wells died in, uh, I want to say 2020. She kind of backtracked on most of her statements since the end of <laughs> Gilligan's Island, which was, you know, oh, I love Gilligan's Island. I always, you know, it's part of my life and blah, blah, blah. And all this. But she wasn't like that. She hated that friggin' show. Thought it typecast her, thought it ruined her acting career. And she was probably right. But she's the only one, if you look at like IMDb, she's the only one that's doing like Fantasy Island, you know, she's doing all the whole circuit. Uh, she's appearing on, um, what was the other one that had uh, people like every week? Fantasy Island was what, The Love Boat. She does an episode of The Love Boat, right? So she's making the rounds as this, like, you know, guest, Barnaby Jones guest starring Tina Lu this week's guest star, Tina Louise, right? But she's making all these things. Uh, no one else, I think, had a career like that after that. Russell Johnson had trouble, you know? So, God, 
Exactly. I'd run the Gilligan's Island category like a freaking boss. <laughs> Don't get me started. What's uh what's the skipper's real name? Jonah Grumby. Of course it's Jonah. He is a captain after all. Do, 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 do. I'll take Gilligan for a thousand, Alex. This 1975 show only lasted one season for Gilligan after the show's ending. Um, what is Space Nuts? Uh, what was the other one that was, um, I heard the Sid and Marty Croft stuff got picked up. So, you know, Land of the Lost. H.R. Puffin stuff, um, Lost Saucer, that's the one I'm thinking of, with Jim Neighbors and Ruth Buzzy. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> there's, a, there's, a, there's a friggin' pluck. So um, I found that um, Prime Video had the uh, Gilligan's Island stuff uh, on there. Um. It was like 23 bucks, 24 bucks for a season, the whole season. And, you know, back then, seasons were, you know, 35 episodes. It's not the 14 episodes that they do, you know, these days. Seven in the fall and seven in the spring. You know, first episode runs like October 12th. <laughs> Dang, so bad. Um, so I, I bought seasons two and three. And, uh, man, they look awesome. They look so friggin' good. Maybe a little too clear. You can see how the uh, how the, the huts are made of plastic, right? Uh, I also heard that that um, lagoon they had was a real lagoon that they built on set. It was right by a street, so they had to be careful when they... A lot of times when they're filming out there, they're doing all voiceover because you can hear the street. <laughs> You can hear, like, car traffic going by, you know. And that lagoon was, like, right off, uh, like, a major road in Studio City. And uh, the the water got, like, so nasty, none of them wanted to go in there. And uh, they made them, uh, they, they basically said, unless, like, the director, like, walks into the lagoon, we're not going back in. And they, they wound up bringing a team in to, like, put... Um, I think they put a waterfall in it, right, to sort of churn the water up. Uh, that's one way to to try to keep something from going nasty. And what, what would that be? still, you know, just standing water, just goes gross, you know. That bamboo jail, and who was in the bamboo jail? Don Rickles, <laughs> right? Isn't it Don Rickles? Isn't he the kidnapper? Right? The ghost is the guy who plays Jaws. Right? He's like seven foot something. He's Mr. Larson in uh, uh, Happy Gilmore. Yeah, stagnant. Exactly. Actually, they they I can get all the Lost in Space. They're included, I think, with Prime. But, God, those are bad. Those are so bad. Yeah, I mean, you think Gilligan's Island is bad and campy. The problem with, uh, the problem with friggin' Lost in Space is they're, they're so bad and they're not even trying. You know, they're not trying to be bad. It just is. He did play Jaws the Shark. It is quite a range. <laughs> Yeah, Richard Keel. Thank you. Thanks, Artie. 
Uh, Steve, I bought the PCO2, but for some reason, no matter what I try, I get low volume using a Rode podcast mic when the setting is in place in the green box and when I record, the volume is low. Well, that is weird. I haven't done much recording. Let me just look at... If I go to um, I'm an in one, and you're hearing it okay through your headphones, yeah, that is weird. Um, uh, hold on, let me let me go all here. I'll, I'll see if I can get this. I don't want to break it, but let me see if I can go here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You see how these, I, I make sure, switch it from, you might be on blue, and you might see how when I switch that, all those changed. Some, the white is the actual output. I wonder if that's the internal output as well. Check your levels when you switch your headphone to that internal, right? So there it is, blue, but there it is, it'll turn white, it'll show you the internal. One selects it, and then one changes it to white. Make sure that white one is where you want it, because that might be the internal sound. You see what I'm saying? That might be where it's getting the... That's why it might be where the internal levels are. Give that a try, because that was making me crazy for a while. I could not get it. I could get it to sound great in my headphones, but for some reason, when I was trying to record it, and that's when I realized there's two different um, uh, templates. There's one for the headphones, and then there's the other one for just, like, output. But what does output mean? Is that the output out of the back, or is that the output also to the recorder? Right? <laughs> Logan's run, oh my God. And that they had the crystal in the middle of their hand, right? You turned 30 years old and you were too old. Damn. Looking at it like not too many years ago, and there's a scene of like the futuristic like cars, and it's so friggin' fake and toy. I mean, it makes the Japanese, you know, stuff look like world class CGI. <laughs> it's so bad. Um, one of my streaming services, I think it might be HBO, has all of the. Um, Godzilla movies, but unfortunately they don't, you know, part of the fun of watching the Godzilla movies is the absolutely horrible voiceover work. I mean, it's just, it's so bad. It's so bad. It's awesome. So it, this was the original actors and they subtitle it, right? Because they're, they're trying to be purists and they're all movie heads, but I, I actually prefer the, and you can't change it. You can't change it from subtitles to voiceover. You know, they either have the voiceover track or they don't and they don't. Logan said, what was the other one? Uh, Space, 1999. And there was that chick who could change into crap. What was her name? Like Hydra or some shit. I have one bass. I have a, um, someone asked about basses. I have an Ibanez bass. That I bought at the parking, uh, at a, uh, a parking lot by the, by the legal seafood in Chestnut Hill. For a hundred bucks. 
Kiss Meets the Fandom was so bad for voiceovers. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, and you know who was real bad about voiceovers, too, was, is, um, believe it or not, Predator 2. I don't think there's a live piece of voiceover in that whole movie. Predator 2 was 100% voice, you know, you know, uh, what do they call that, ASL? ADL or ADS, something like that. Are you still have Creature Double Feature in Boston? It was on uh, Channel 56. No, I think that's long gone. 56 um, sold their spectrum back to the government. They're, um, I think 56 is um, cable only. There's no more over the air. Watched Godzilla vs. King Kong the other day for probably a hundredth time, yeah. At first, they hate each other, but then they team up. <laughs> when I watch that, sometimes I'm, like, giving dialogue. You know, they're looking at each other, and I'm just like, I respect you, bro. I respect you, bro. <laughs> My wife says I talk to the TV too much. I say I don't talk enough. <laughs> Yeah, Dale Dorman. You know. I right, stop so see if you're gonna be using the Donner PCO two. Well, I don't know if I can use it all the time. Um check, check. Oh yeah. See, there's now there was one where it looked like I had no signal. I can see I have signal, I can hear it in my headphones, but that's because I was on the other. Yeah, you get a little confusing with that. You're on a, you're on a, a different um, snapshot of the motorized faders. <laughs> Am I up later? Probably not. Probably not. Speaking of wascally wabbits, um, uh, I think it's I think it's HBO has a lot of the uh, Looney Tunes, a lot of the Looney Tunes. Um, but it's weird; it's it's still kind of selective because you're looking for you know specific episodes, and I don't see them in there. So um, it went on for many years. I don't think I think they only have like so many seasons. What kind of headphones am I wearing? Sen Sennheisers. I think these are HD. What are they? 558s? Five fifty eights? Five five nineties? Five ninety nines. Five ninety nine SE. Sennheiser five ninety nine SE is the correct answer. A Sennheiser 599 SE. Uh, go ahead, call. You're on the air. Uh, yeah, what uh, what kind of headphones were you using there? Uh, it's Sennheiser uh, 599 SEs. Thanks for calling. Yeah, some of the good <clears throat> Godzilla movies are like uh, Monster Zero, uh, Destroy All Monsters, um, Son of Godzilla... Can't go wrong with that. I don't know. There are many dark Tom and Jerry episodes. They have a lot of Tom and Jerry on there, too. But again, I think they could be more selective. Um... When they were playing Gilligan's Island on, they don't do it on um, Prime Video, but um, when you were on Sundance, they had a little disclaimer saying, you know, this show was shot in the 60s, and, you know, humor was a little different back then, and there's a lot of stereotyping going on in here, and, you know, they're still stranded, and time has marched on, so, you know... 
Viewer discretion is advised. <laughs> yeah, Gamma Rai is really good. So Gamma Rai was supposed to be a, um, was that a competing brand to Godzilla, right? So Godzilla comes out, and they were like, Gamma Rai is basically a knockoff Godzilla. They're just like, well, you know, they have a giant lizard. We'll make a giant turtle. There you go. And it'll actually be able to spin around. The best thing about Gamma Rai was that it had the fireworks coming out of the, I don't know where the legs come out, and we just, you know, spin around them like it's pretty awesome. Yeah, the jets coming out of the holes, exactly. Yeah, I think Godzilla isn't that the the isn't that the the premise, right? He's a, uh because of atomic bombing and the radiation, right? I don't remember Monster X. I'm trying to remember, uh, is that the one that kind of looks like a bird? They had so many. Yeah, Mothra. They used to have one that kind of looked like its head was kind of like a giant knife, and it would come out of the ground. Um, but I think that's when it was, I think that's Gamera. I don't think that's Godzilla. You know, when you're a kid, they all sort of blend together, but you find out they're actually very different production groups. Oh, Gamera's from China. Interesting. Godzilla from Japan. Right. Interesting. Yeah, well, the original uh, Gojira is um, it, 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 what's his name in it? Right, the Perry Mason guy there. They actually, they actually got an American star to to to, to, to star in it. Yeah, I think the three-headed monster is Hydra. Yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> Not, no, it's definitely not Rodan. I don't think it is. Let me see here. Do do do. do. They're really not showing a ton of stuff in here, huh? The problem is it's so copyrighted. You know, it's hard to get anything out there. Yeah. There. Does this one have it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Here you go. There you go. Godzilla, right? The different iterations. Here's your Mothra. King Ghidorah, I think that's the one you're thinking of. There's Rodan. There's uh, Manila. There's Megalon. I was thinking of this one. Gigon. Gigon. Gijon. There's Mecha. Right. That's the one I was thinking of. Then, of course, Jet Jaguar. Nice. Megalon. See, it's black and white. Must have been an early movie. Of course. <laughs> yeah, then there's one movie that's just is a, a giant dog. 
There's a couple of them. Space Godzilla. Can't go wrong with that. It's pretty good. Now, you stick space in front of anything, it just instantly classes it up. It's not Godzilla. It's Space Godzilla. But again, you know, I'm not really seeing a giant lobster, a crustacean. I think that's the one you were thinking of, the three-headed monster. Uh, this, I think this was in... Um, Destroy All Monsters. Yeah, that's what I think of. And Godzilla vs. I've seen, yeah, these were on recently. Oh, there's a whole bunch. Jesus. Never ending. <laughs> nice. Mothra. Anyway, I wonder if I could do a quick thing for um, Hmm. Yeah, this is the one I'm thinking of. There you go. Literally says, this guy. Literally says, creature feature right there. Oh, yeah. That's the one I remember as a kid. He's like a giant knife. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, sure. Sure, you know, you know, some of those, you know, monsters that are like giant knives. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it looks real. Sure. Some of the Gamera monsters. I don't really remember. Oh, yeah, yeah. Kind of remember that one. That was about it. I don't really remember these other ones. I remember the... The knife head, and of course, you know, Gamera himself, and that's really what, when I think Gamera, like, like the way old, like that's way, that's, that's AI modernized, you know, yeah, 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 that's more like it, a dude in a suit. Look sharp, right? Pretty sharp looking. Exactly, candy gram. this guitar I really do you know another thing uh, HBO has um, I was just thinking I was watching earlier today is the uh, I don't know if I mentioned this I might have already mentioned it but they have the um, like all the I don't know what the hell are you doing you know you, you piss you, you, you're freaking pissing me off here uh, yeah. Is it, uh, it's somewhere in here. You know, they, they, they have this stupid thing where they, you click on a, a page and it changes the look of your, Chrome based on the page, right? It like it like plucks out the colors on the page to give you a nice border. It's like I just want black. Don't don't change the look. Don't change the theme of my friggin'. And I knew they had done that recently. I thought I had turned it off, but 
I went onto this page and all of a sudden it was there. And I'm like, you know, what, what are you, what are you doing? <laughs> so I had to go in there and change it back. It's just pissing me off. <laughs> God, it's it's Krellbar. Krellbar, welcome back. There's been a lot of changes since you've been here last. <laughs> First of all, I'm uh, I'm in I'm in now with a with a truck sponsorship. The truckery. Come on down to the truckery. No, no trailer news. Trailer's been stalled because it's too hot and humid out. I don't like to go outside when it's uh, when the dew point is above, like, say, 50. And it's probably going to be above 50 until, like, the middle of October. It's, like, pissing me off. Great, you come back and you're greeted by Satan. Exactly. Welcome back. But you never really left, did you, Krillbar? Oh, well, we are having fun. <laughs> Come on down to the truckery. <laughs> uh. I, I actually I can go lower than that. Um, let's uh, let's go to it here, and then we'll go to the we'll go to the effects here, and then uh, we'll switch over to the uh, the old pitch. And uh, is this uh, what you were talking about? Is uh, is this what you want? Is this what you wanted? Is this, is this, is this what you wanted? Check. All right, hey, we'll go the other way. Check. 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 Welcome back, Cry Bear. Cry Bear. Cry Bear. Crowbar. Crowbar. This is your conscience. Ah. <laughs> uh. Yeah, exactly. What am I, a clown to you? What am I, funny? How am I funny? <laughs> that would be a great bit, right? Get all the... Get all the lines from, uh... From, um... Check, check. I like around minus four. Uh... Check. Get all the lines from that Joe Pesci scene. And just do it on a real high pitch. What am I, clowning you? Yeah, exactly the... Mm-hmm. Tarzan. <laughs> Tarzan. What was that? I can't... I can't was, was in the real man. Was in the real man. How did that band ever make it? I'll, I'll never know. That was a that was a blip, never to be recreated, and they they actually got on SNL. What was the name of that band? Tarzan. That's a, the only thing I remember. Tarzan. I can't remember it. I'm going to say it's 1992, 1993. Crash test on me, so sassy cat. You know, some some things are best forgotten. <laughs> Crash test dummies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
right around that same time, I, I want to say it's the been downhearted dude, which it sounds good because that's BB King singing a been downhearted baby. That's that's her. the guy you like noodling on the piano. Ding 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 ding. That's the dude who wrote the song. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Let's see if we can add some effects to this. Uh, effects. <coughs> Check. Hi there. A little more level on that. Hi there. Here we go. Um, hmm. Got a bigger room than this? Check. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Uh, check. Uh, check. That's even bigger, I think. Check. Oh, yeah. Okay. Where did I leave that? Got to put this up a little higher. Check like that. Uh huh. And then we can go uh, here. Yes. Hello? Anybody out there? Echo. Check. Check one, two. Go back. Return that. Oh, check, 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 check. <coughs> check, 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 Oh, we're having fun. All right, enough. Enough of this silliness. Andrew had it right. No, no fun. Come on, enough of this. Grow up, for Christ's sakes, all of you. What's wrong with you? Kylo Ren. I have to do my emperor voice. What can you offer me? Everything. Bring the girl to me. Exactly. There's a no fun zone. Considered unnatural. Some considered unnatural. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. You have to do the. See the, the the problem is is I can't. There's no. Um, I would love it if they could build into it. The instant on and off, like they do for the. Um, for the special effects, like the, you know, the, um, the megaphone and so forth. Um, they could do that for the reverb, but they can't, they don't, it's on, it's on or off. And you have to do it from here. Check. 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 One, two. Bring that decay up a little bit. Check. Check. All right. Calm down there. He said, "Yeah, yeah, but we should do it like a, like a digital delay. Check, check. No, is it off? 
Check, 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 check. Yeah, there it goes. I'll bring that time up, though. Check, 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 check. Pitch, pitch, hitting, 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 hitting. I think I got to bring the time up even a little more. And the feedback down a little bit. Pitch, hitting, hitting, hitting. Bring that level down. And we'll bring that reverb. Check. Pitch hitting. David Ortiz. Yeah, I, I, again, I wish they again, could. I wish they could. They could set these so they could be instantly on and off. I mean, I can turn them off easy enough, but still. The auto the auto tune doesn't really. I couldn't get it to really work. The pitch works fine, and the megaphone works fine. Caller, you're on the air. Uh, yeah. It is, uh, have you ever uh, heard or seen a crowd bar in the last uh, six months? As a matter of fact, he's back on tonight. Get out of town. Slush back to 1986, exactly. Yeah, the, let's. Um, calm down. Oh. All right, calm, calm down. Ah, interesting. That's just a hit. It's actually a pretty long sample. <laughs> you can't you can't get enough of that one. Did it do? Or the truckery. Come on down to the truckery. We got trucks. What kind of trucks? Oh, what kind of truck you gonna be buying? You come on down and see me down at the truckery. Exactly, real men of genius. Nelson, gifted five memberships. Welcome. <laughs> All right, you know what happens when people get new memberships. You have to get the, the shame bell. I could do better than that. That's not a good bell. It's a good shame bell. There you go. Joe Hervey. 
BC Rich 581. Of course, the almighty Antichrist. And Scott Brockway. Welcome. And a shame. for Almighty Antichrist. Shame. Shame. this guitar. You know what? I like this guitar. I remember you said that guitar was too bright at one time. You know what? I could probably hear higher frequencies then, Krellbar. You know, since then, the, the, the high-pass filter of age has sort of brought it down the hair. <laughs> Please strangle all the bear tits turned into a rug. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> Krellbar, you would you'd be in on this. We had a big discussion earlier about uh, Gilligan's Island, and somebody just picked up the Sid and Marty Croft stuff. I'm, and unfortunately, it's not a, a it's you know it's some stupid new streaming service, but it's not it's not one of the major ones. But somebody just picked up Sid and Marty Croft. They got all the everything under that umbrella. And it's not Crackle, but you know what I'm saying. It's it might as well be Crackle. <laughs> Probably like Shoutcast or some shit. <laughs> do, 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 do. The Gilligan talk was riveting. It was a, it was a pretty damn good show. Oh, my God, Lidsville. Holy crap. Oh, my God, Lidsville. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, when you look back, uh, you know, uh, they all last like one season. You know, Far Out Space Nuts, one season. The Lost Saucer, one season. Um, you know, a lot of them are one season. Uh, the only one, like, Land of the Lost gets three seasons, but they, they can't even get the main guy to come back in the third season. They replaced him with his, quote-unquote, like, his brother, like Uncle Jack. And uh, they have him wear, like, a uh, like a black wig to to show that the the, the old guy, the, the, the guy who won't resign with them goes back up to the surface and gets replaced with the uncle. And it's just that it's just that easy. Oh no, we can write you right out. You know, I almost felt like they should have done that for the reunion. The the the, the worst is the goddamn um, you know rescue from Gill, Gilligan's Island. Um, 
you know, they could have done so much better. It's, it, it, and rather than hiring like real writers, uh, Sherwood Schwartz hires like his brothers to write it. And it's the most hackneyed, cliched stuff. It's so bad. And at one point they're on the, you know, the main boat and, um, <coughs> and was that work? My mute button. And, um, and they're being like dragged around on the ocean by like a shark and the new, uh, ginger who's got a, you know, bigger rack than Tina Louise, uh, you know, she's got the, she's got the rack out in several shots, uh, and a pretty see-through top. It was pretty blatant, um, and it turns into like this stupid like international espionage. It, it could not a terrible, terrible writing, and they have no laugh track on it. And you kind of need it without the laugh track. A lot of the jokes fall really flat, so bad. Gilligan's Island meets the Harlem Globetrotters is probably still probably better than any any of them. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yeah, if you if the Russell Johnson does an interview in like I don't know, like two thousand and five or something like that, I forget when it was, two thousand and eight. And uh he basically says like um Alan Hale, pretty much his character is the skipper. That that's pretty much how he was. You know, wasn't a lot of acting going on there. That's pretty much how he really was. Um you know, and that Marianne was just sweet, you know, and, and, and the Tina Louise, you know, was always super nice. And he said that uh, Jim Backus was by far, like, the funniest on the set, like a real cut-up and, um, you know, and all this stuff. But he said Gilligan was actually a pretty serious dude. He was a little bit more like of a reader, was a little bit more quiet, not like not so outgoing. It was, he's like, he had, like, the role that he played was completely opposite of his like personality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did. He played Mr. Magoo. Um, uh, Jim Backus, uh, not only being uh, Thurston Howell the Third, he um, he was also the voice of Mr. Magoo. <laughs> preferred Marianne over Ginger. Well, you could have voted in the earlier. We had a poll. Marianne won on the landslide. Yeah, Jonas Grumby. That's the skipper's real uh, real name. And uh, God, I used to know all of them. He grabbed a screenshot of it because I thought it was so awesome. Let me see if I can call that up here. Um, one of the things I really loved about, uh, yeah, 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 there, yeah, there it is. Now, when I show you this, just write in the comments the band that was influenced by this next photo. The next photo, I, the photo I'm about to show you is of Gilligan's Island. You take a look at this photo and you tell me the band that was clearly influenced. You ready? And this is one of my favorite episodes when the meteor lands and uh, they have to cover themselves in lead so they can go with his homemade Geiger counter there to check it out. See the Devo meeting right now, guys. Guys, I just want to show you 
what I think our our new look should be. <laughs> oh, the second I saw it, I said, "Oh my God, that that, that is Devo." <laughs> That's a great episode too, All right? Uh, everything's growing, and then um, they have the dream I, again. Another dream sequence. Uh, there's a great dream sequence when everyone's disappearing. And uh, Gilligan thinks he's a you know a Jekyll and Hyde character, and he's killing everyone, and doesn't know he's doing it. And he falls asleep and has a. It's a mashup of, um, My Fair Lady. Uh, Jekyll and Hyde. And I want to say Mary Poppins, right? Because doesn't Natalie Schaefer come in like Mary Poppins? He taught me how to walk and to talk and to act like a regular lady. <laughs> he gave me real class, he did. <laughs> right? Fresh fish. God. So many. That That is a wonderful episode. Chop suey Dixie style. Yeah, oh my god, the 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 Dracula episode, the vampire episode is a great episode. The episode when he turns invisible is a great episode. As a matter of fact, at one point I was noticing um uh Don Wells has a glass of milk in her hand. You can literally see what looks to be like a surgical tubing, you know, like a rubber line coming out of the bottom of it. And that's how they pull the uh that's how they pull the milk out of the bottom of it. it. Makes it look like an invisible man is drinking the milk. Then they got the, um, you know, people love this episode, but I just thought Phil Silvers was insufferable. But Phil Silvers shows up as the, um, um, <clears throat> is the director or the producer. And they wind up doing a musical version of Hamlet, which is pretty funny, right? The musical version of Hamlet. Okay, that is pretty funny. But still, I couldn't stand friggin' what's his name? Uh, Phil Silvers. Yeah, the stunt pilot episode, the Jack and the Beanstalk episode, Runway Feldman. Oh, my God. And, uh... Oh, I, I, I got into it. They they ran a marathon last weekend, Krell Bar. That's why I recently got back into it. I, I haven't watched them in so long. The, right, the professor that takes them off, right, they get off the island, they go to his castle, and they switch voices, right? Ginger is the big thug. <laughs> I, it's, so, it's so great, so perfect. Oh, yeah, the God of the Mosquitoes. Um, what is it? Um, uh, uh, what is it? Wait. Like a flower needs a bee, like a bee needs a tree, like a bee needs a. It just turns into that. Just turns into like a one six four five, right? Like a Peter, I need a song. Like a Peter, it's a God. The mosquitoes. So. What's so interesting about those kids, and you don't realize it when you're a kid, but as an adult, you can totally see what's going on. Right? There's uh, Bingo, Bango, Bongo, and Irving. Right? And uh, what you what you really have, though, is three guys who, I believe it's the three guys that sing the opening tune. Right? Because it's people that the 
production house knows. The people who who actually did the uh, the opening song. Fun fact: there was another guy who wrote the opening song for Gilligan's Island, but Sherwood Schwartz passed on it because he had co-written a song with another guy and would rather get the the songwriting credits. But the the first guy, a guy by the name of uh, John Williams, went on to great success. <laughs> Yeah, they, they passed on a John Williams score for the opening of Gilligan's Island because they don't want to pay out the royalties. And uh, sure, Schwartz would rather have a co-writing, you know. But, uh, oh my God, that show. Yeah, three hour toilet. It is. It's like poetry. So the 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 uh, those three guys are like the non speaking roles in the band. And if you notice, they have one actor who they bring in who does like all the speaking parts for the you know for the mosquitoes. I've had this Charvel for, I don't know, I feel like a long time, right? Haven't I had this like, I don't know, seven years? I feel like I got this in 2015, maybe 2016. I'd have to look back. Uh, <laughs> it was a great one when... Uh, 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 was it Gilligan becomes the the leader of the country, but he's really like a puppet leader. And they keep telling him, you know, things are really bad. And he keeps going to the window and the, he opens it up. And it's like this stock footage of like a, you know, riots in the streets. And he goes, oh, the, the, you know, the skipper shows up. Well, the Navy's not doing so good. And he, go, he goes, oh, look for yourself. And he opens the window. And, of course, it's, you know, like these ships in a big... <laughs> battle all going down it's like all this old black and white you know they go from color to black and white because they don't have any color footage right because color is a new technology so all the footage out the window is all black and white it's like oh it's perfect it is friggin perfect they also invented the whole um funny strange or funny haha right when people quote that i think they're quoting gilgan's island Is it a Tone King or vice versa? Yeah, Tone King's been here like two or three times. And I've been to his house at least once, maybe twice. Definitely in 2017 I was there. I went to a trip down in New York with the wife. And she was at work in one day. So I, uh, I took the bus and it got me actually not too far from, from his house, you know, maybe a 20-minute drive. <laughs> Video for the Charvel is June 2nd, 2015. Huh? Who's a, who remembers 2015? I'm uh, just saying. <laughs> Yeah, Speed Racer, you, I don't really, I never realized that Speed Racer was, you know, in Japanese and the, it was all, you know, uh, overdubbed. It I didn't dawn on me until you watch the, the episodes later and you realize that the voice, it doesn't really line up.
do a video together. We'll give it some serious thought. the um i told you i have the speed racer theme song it's just a photocopy but it's the original theme song music and lyrics and it's signed by the uh <clears throat> by the principal guy from the show who passed away uh not too long ago i think uh within the last 10 years um peter peter something and he's also the voice of Speed Racer and Racer X. That's why Speed Racer sounded like everyone was shouting, yeah. I think it's, again, I think it's HBO has it, but they have all the, is it HBO or is it, and I think it's HBO, because it might be under the Warner umbrella again. Um, they have all the, uh, the Flintstones and they have all the Scooby-Doo's. <clears throat> What's interesting about the, um, you know, the Scooby-Doo's is, um, oh God, what was his name? The Casey Kasem does the voice of Shaggy. He doesn't really get the voice going right right away, right? It's a little bit more normal. I'm like, where the hell is the Shaggy voice? But it shows up in later seasons when he really gets into the, right? Like a lot of animated characters, their voice changes over the seasons. doesn't really quite get to its spot. Kind of like Homer, right? Homer doesn't really become Homer, I think, until like season three. Yeah, Chim Chim, the mammoth car. And everybody's got, like, giant eyes and tiny noses. It's because Shaggy wasn't stoned in the early seasons, yeah. Yeah, Spritel. God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The original Homer was a an imitation of Walter Matthau, but eventually that sort of wore off. It be, sort of became his own thing. I remember there used to be Japanese shows that would show like one day of the year. They'd be on, like, Thanksgiving or, like, and they were bizarre, right? Um, I don't really remember too many of them, but I, they're, they're clearly, now that I, you know, think of the, the Speed Racer. But I remember there were, like, windmills involved, and the kids would go into the windmills and then come out like, I don't know, like, demons or something. It was, like, really bizarro. Again, you did not see them very often. Maybe once a year. Um, God. Mm 
Yeah, was it uh, was it Electra Woman and Dinah Girl? Um, if you ever catch any of the uh, like trailers for that, oh my God, it's the it's just so friggin' um, you know uh, low budget and low budget special effects. It's so friggin' bad. I don't think I remember Gargoyles. A 70s movie, Gargoyles. The Sleestacks Stacks from um, Lost uh, Land of the Lost and the Witchy Poo from HR Prof and stuff. Uh oh, I like the look of that. Some some blinky lights there for a second. the car. Do I remember the car? I might. Hmm. I don't think I do. The car movie, 1977 film. Starring Ronnie Cox. What? Small desert town is terrorized by a powerful, seemingly possessed car. The local sheriff may be the only one who can stop it. Yeah, James Brolin. Interesting. I don't recognize anybody else. <clears throat> the car. Is it a phantom? Is it a phantom? A demon? Or the devil himself? There's nowhere to run. There's nowhere to hide. No way to stop. The car. Oh, my God, it writes itself. Yeah, Christine, Cujo, Amityville Horror. I saw the original Halloween in the movie theater. I'm pretty sure I saw the original, um, what you call it, uh, the original uh, Evil Dead in the, in the theater. They've been running the, um, they've been running the Mary Tyler Moore documentary. I forgot we went and saw ordinary people in the theater. So we were going to the movie theater every week with checking out movies and and we see like Harold and Maud, which is, you know, this quirky indie film. We don't know anything about it. Yeah, we'll just go see Harold and Maud. We love it. We're laughing our asses off. Harold and Maud is such a weird, you know, quirky movie. So like the next week we go in and it's ordinary people. Sure, we'll go. I remember sitting in that theater going, huh, well, this is a bummer. <laughs> it's kind of, a, kind of a really intense, intensely bad movie. This isn't fun. This isn't fun at all. <laughs> oh, my God. So bad. So bad is a, I, I want to say, when did ordinary people come out? 79? Was I 13?
Kramer versus Kramer versus Godzilla. Exactly. The first rated R movie I ever saw was uh, um, Animal House. It was an epiphany that mo- that movies could be made that way. Yeah, 1980. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I would have been 13 or 14. First star movie was Saturday Night Fever. I didn't see that in the theater. I, I, I didn't see that till it was out on video. Oh, thanks, friend. Thanks, friender. You like the sound of the new Donner? Stripes for you, yeah. Blazing Saddles. I saw Blazing Saddles after I saw, but it wasn't. It wasn't until after I saw. Um, I definitely saw uh, Animal House first, then Blazing Saddles. Yeah, yeah, History of the World Part Part 1. It's good to be the king. First time movies, Three Days of the Condor. I don't even remember that. Yeah, Young Frankenstein, but that wasn't rated R. That was rated PG, if I remember correctly. I remember seeing Young Frankenstein. First theater movie you can remember was Xanadu. They're coming out with a new Kung Fu Panda. Kung Fu Panda 4. In case you were wondering. Wow, is it really? Is it already 8.59? That tonight went fast. Yes, very quickly. Carla, you're on the air. Yeah, I thought uh, tonight went uh, particularly quickly. Yeah, I thought so too. Have a good one, speaker. We'll talk soon. We're almost out of here. You got fireworks going off. Somebody had some left over. Yeah. Put the candle back. <laughs> uh. Yeah, too funny. If I'm up, I'll watch you up if you're up. I might not be tonight. I was up early today. It was a busy day. I'm pretty tired. Last week I was wiped, too. You know, it's like, I can't do work in this heat. It's killing me. You know. All right, dudes. I'm out. We are out of here. Uh, I will see you guys uh, next week. At the very least. And uh, we'll do it all over again. And, uh, you know. Won't you join us next week. For an all new show. About trucks. You know who's not going to be here? Andrew. Your band, bro. dudes um you know thanks for everybody uh, for hanging out tonight super extra special thanks to uh anyone who contributed and i know nelson bought a lot of people uh new uh memberships uh it's always appreciated you guys rock and you know uh bro fist to my mod squad hashtag bro fist hashtag mod squad 
and uh, we'll do it all again in one week. And uh, I don't know if we'll do this all again, but uh, you know, I want I, I, I wanted to do a little bit more with the Donner, with the PCO two. I, I really do love this thing. Um, it's pretty awesome. All right, dudes. There you go. And uh, we'll do it all again in a week. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Almighty Antichrist, you're one of the... Uh, no, 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 you rock, Thomas. No, 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 you rock. No, 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 you rock. No. All right. Have a wonderful week, guys. I'll see you guys next week. Have a wonderful week, and uh, we'll do it all again in a week. And there you go. It's a wonderful week. Like that, it's like that movie. It's a wonderful week. All right, dudes. Adieu.